Here's my full book review of Dust by Hugh Howey, the last book of the Salo book series. And I'm also going to review Salo stories, which are three extra mini stories about the Salo series. Oh, hi, Mark. What's up, Fichero fam? Welcome back to my channel, where I'd like to explore everything that life has to offer. I know I just posted my review of Shift because I finished the entire Silo trilogy. I figured, why not just post this video right away and get right in to Dust? As you can see here, the last book of the Silo trilogy. And I'm also going to review Silo Stories, which has three mini stories about the Silo series. So I'm gonna put this down here. And I do suggest, like I've said in every video, get the box set. It's $28 right now on Amazon, at least at the exact time in this video. Way cheaper getting the box set than buying each book individually. And of course, I don't even know if you can buy the Salo Stories like mini book. As you can see, it's pretty small. You might be able to somewhere online. But one thing I do want to say as we jump right into the review of both of these, there will be no spoilers in this video. I like to film my videos and my book reviews in such a way that... If you've not read the book, you don't have to worry about anything being revealed. And if you have read the book, you'd be very curious to hear what I have to say about it. One asterisk on that, and I'll give you a heads up, but one asterisk on that is I will give my thoughts about the ending in this book. Now, I'm not gonna reveal anything, and I'll give you a heads up once I get to the ending. I'm not gonna reveal anything, but I know sometimes some people don't even wanna hear someone's opinion on the ending because it kind of ruins it if they want to get their own perspective on it themselves, if that makes sense. But anyway, let's jump right into it. So this is Dust. This is the last book, like I said, of the Salo book series. And of course, like I've said in other videos, to sum up the Salo book series in a sentence or two, a bunch of people are trapped underground in a silo. They don't know why they're there. And for whatever reason, they cannot go outside. I gotta say, I mean, Hugh Howie is such a phenomenal writer. Easily my favorite fiction trilogy I've ever read. I mean, each book was an absolute page turner, phenomenal read. The storyline, the scripting, everything was just incredible. Now jumping into Dust, I gotta be honest, I'm very transparent in all my videos. If I had to rank the books in order, I'd go two, one, three. I'd go shift, then wool, then dust. So out of the three, Gotta be honest, I hate to say it, I would rank this book the last. However, and I do wanna be honest, that does not mean this book's a bad read. Like I said, it's my favorite fiction trilogy I've ever read by far. So even though this book is my least favorite out of the three, it is still an insane read. And one thing I've really kind of come to learn about the Salo book series and Hugh Howie especially, and this is my perspective now after looking back on the whole trilogy, is I feel like at first, this is maybe a sci-fi series or a dystopian series. I now think it's actually like a psychological thriller type series or a psychological, sociological, social psychology type series that is disguised as looking like a sci-fi series. And what I mean is, especially in this book, there are a few points in this book where I'm like, huh, why is he bringing that up? There were some points in this book where he brought up like new plots and everything that only lasted for a chapter or half a chapter. And I'm like, why? is being introduced in the last book and then immediately goes away and is never talked about ever again, kind of random. But the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, you know what? I think what Hugh Howie's trying to do is trying to emulate or describe or demonstrate the psychology of what people would act like when in a dystopian society, what people would act like when they feel like their lives are on the line, what people would act like when they feel like that they have to kind of fend for themselves and a lot more. The show Walking Dead, for example, I think portrays this well, where although the show's about, like, say, you know, zombies and the zombie apocalypse, you actually really realize it's not zombies you have to worry about, it's people. It's human nature that's actually sometimes the bigger worry or the bigger scare. And I think that the Salad book series really does emulate that super well, especially because a lot happens in dust and certain you know, plots get concluded and ended. I think it really does demonstrate the whole aspect of human psychology and human nature when you genuinely feel like, like I said, your life is on the line. With that being said, let's get into the ending. Like I said, I'm not gonna reveal anything, but I am gonna give my opinion of the ending. If you don't wanna hear my opinion, just X out this video and conclude it there. But if you do, keep watching. I'll give you a second. A few moments later. Okay. Gotta be honest, mixed when it comes to the ending of Dust. I 
I thought it was a good ending. It's not that I thought it was bad, and I can't really describe like my exact thoughts on it, but the best way I can describe it is it just didn't feel complete to me. I, I didn't feel satisfied. I thought it was a good ending, don't get me wrong, but I feel like there were a couple of things that just ended, and I'm like, oh, that's it, but what about this or this? Like, I just didn't feel like, at least to me, I didn't feel satisfied and complete. It, it, it wasn't a cliffhanger ending, like, it was a very conclusive ending of what happened. I do want to stress, I don't think the ending was bad. I know some people liked it, some people didn't. I just, I remember just putting the book down and being like, oh, that's it? Okay, it's it's over. And we have probably all been there, like, say, with a TV show or a book series where a series gets finished and you almost have, like, an existential crisis. You're like, wow, it's over. I felt that way, for example, with the show Supernatural. Huge fan of that show. And as a side note, I did actually like the finale of Supernatural. I know it's a heavily debated topic among the Supernatural fandom. And I remember after Supernatural being like, wow, I've watched the show for like half my life and now it's over. So it's kind of like a weird feeling. With this series, I didn't really get that. It was just more of a, okay, I guess that's it. Like it, that that's... That's it. Like all this leading up to this. It was kind of, again, it wasn't anticlimactic. It's not like it was a bad ending. I just, I can't put my finger on it exactly. I just didn't feel complete after reading it. So that being said now, let's get in to the silo stories. I'm gonna put this down because a couple of things I wanna say about this. Now, I think you can only get this in the box set. Like I said, I don't know though. You might be able to buy it online. I, I, I don't know. And for the Salo stories to show you, there are three different kind of mini short stories about Salo. There's in the air, in the mountain, and in the woods. Now the first two short stories run in parallel with the second book, Shift. The last short story, In the Woods, happens after Dust. So if you want to look at the actual timeline of the silo book series it technically goes shift in the air and in the mountains the short stories then wool then dust then in the woods short story so the actual true ending of the entire silo saga is in here the actual true ending that happens after dust now the first two short stories i really liked i actually liked them just as much as the other you know, three books where they were super intriguing. I kind of liked getting a little more context too. It was very interesting. Like I said, the first two run in parallel with Shift before everything happens. <sighs> okay. When it comes to the last short story, I, I gotta be honest, I hated the ending. I, I like, I literally put the the book down and I was like, WTF? Like, I think out loud, I was, I, 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 at least to me, and I gotta be honest, you know, I'm very transparent in my videos. I thought the ending of Dust was good, but it didn't complete me or feel, feel satisfying. But the ending in this legitimately made me mad. I'm gonna say this, which might be a little bit touchy for some people. I think the ending of In the Woods, the ending of the entire Salo saga is exactly on par with the ending of How I Met Your Mother. And I know a lot of people said this, after How I Met Your Mother, with that ending, which I feel like that entire last episode of How I Met Your Mother could have been an entire season in of itself, I almost kind of wish in a funny way, I didn't read it. I almost kind of wish maybe I didn't know this existed. Maybe I regret buying the box set. Maybe I should have just bought each book individually a la carte and I wouldn't even have known this existed. Being honest, if I have to put this on a scale of like the ending of Breaking Bad, by far the best ending of any TV show by far, and How I Met Your Mother, best to worst, right up there with How I Met Your Mother. I don't know, but, but like I said in the beginning, I try to always look at both sides. I'm like, you know what though? Maybe that is Hugh Howey's point. His point of this whole series is to make things as realistic as possible. How would people actually act in a dystopian, quasi-dictatorship, apocalyptic type situation where you really don't know what's going on, you're super confused, you don't understand the whole context of everything happening, and you feel like your back's against the wall and you really have to fight for your life because you don't know who you can trust and everything. Like I said with The Walking Dead, that it's not the zombies really that you have to worry about, it's other people and humanity or maybe the dark side of humanity. It reminds me a lot of the dark forest theory in case you don't know, kind of summing it up in a couple of sentences. It's the idea that if you're in a dark forest and see somebody, your best bet is to fight back or kill them because you're taking a massive risk thinking that they're gonna be safe or nice or kind. 
you really don't know. And so maybe that's his main point of the way he finished off everything in this book that he's like, look, he's like, this is what actually would happen, which maybe could be potentially true. You know, maybe that is the true way people would act. And I guess if I have to think of both sides, even though I hated the ending, maybe it's actually the most truthful of what would happen in that situation. But I just want to say that as a side note, you know, that uh, definitely a complete shocker. Fair warning, like, I don't know. Part of me kind of says, don't read the last short story in this. Read the other two, but maybe not the last one. But then again, it's Hugh Howie's story. It's how he wanted to kind of conclude, it seems like, the entire silo saga. But another part of me says, like, out of all ways to end it, you want to end it like that? I don't know, but... uh. Read at your own risk.